if it's humming, start pulling things out until the hum's gone. That's the bad cable. Fix that. Don't go immediately to the wall thinking, I know, we'll just lift the ground. This is really a bad thing to do. Now some of you might think, well, why don't you use those ground fault type plugs like they use in bathrooms and kitchens that would keep somebody from getting shocked. The problem is, in audio, even a tiny little bit of uh, current, which wouldn't even shock me, could set one of those ground fault interrupters off and turn off the show. So you really don't want that. Do your wiring right, you won't have the problem. Can I, we ask, had a, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, you said pull things out till the hum stops. Where, where do you pull them out? Uh, in the mixer or on the stage? Unplug things on the stage like my keyboardist at my church. The lady's question was where does she pull out the cables if she's having noise problems? I'd start at the mixer because that's the easiest place to get to all the connectors. Okay. Some times you, you aren't able to get to all these connectors so easy on stage. So it's easier for you to just, at the mixer you can get to every one of them. And if it's a keyboard and there's two plugs, maybe pull them both out. Because you may find that the noise is only from the keyboard. One of the things, since um, I work for Yamaha, I do have to have one little commercial for you. One thing that we have on our, on our mixers that nobody else has in these price ranges is these yellow knobs. Everybody heard like a Rush Limbaugh or something like this on TV or the radio and they yell and scream and they whisper and no matter what it's always the same level. You're like how do they do that? Because you know that even moving this much is, is really kind of the levels really change and you think well your sound system wouldn't it be nice if you could squeeze that make the loud things softer and the soft things a little bit louder? We added these compressors to the mixer. So I'll give you an example. It's off now. It's obviously the full full range of me, you know, the dynamic range. I'm going to start squeezing it. One, two. Now notice it seems louder. It seems louder. So I'll turn it down a little. But notice that the level doesn't change much as I pull the microphone away. See what I mean? But if I get on it really hard, and I start really getting on it, it gets a little louder. It isn't near as loud as I was. And the more compression, the more squeeze that I put on it, the less of a level change when I really use my voice or I whisper. Notice, level's almost the same. This is handy, especially if you've got a, a really, some, some blues singers. I have these whispery voices and they can really belt it out when they want to. This way, your sound system is never going to clip or run out of gas. That's the other thing about a sound system. When you're planning one, if you're lucky enough to get to plan one from the beginning, when you're, when you're trying to figure out just how many watts do I need, what, what, how do I plan this thing so it's going to work, I already told you, you need double the power just to make it perceptibly louder. Start with about a watt a person. If you're going to do only clubs where there's two or three hundred people, and you're only going to talk, one of these sound systems like we're going to give away tonight, be perfect for that. But if you're going to want low end, and that thump, and that extra oomph at the bottom, you're going to need to double that. Double the amount of power you need. So go from 300 or so to 600 watts. If you're going outside, all your bets are off. You need to really go up to closer to 1,000 watts for that same amount of people outside. Because just like we were talking about, we don't have the room to help it out. The sound's not going to come back to us. Two things you can buy that will really help you out, speaker stands. Get these things up off the floor. They didn't give us ears here in our knees. They're up here at the tops of our heads. If you've got speakers, get some stands. These tripod stands don't cost much, and they, you really help throw your sound further with them. One other thing I was going to tell you about with loudspeakers. Lots of guys like to hang them up, want to permanently put them somewhere. And then look in the handles 
on all these loudspeakers, there are a lot of them are made out of plastic now, but they'll just hang some chain on there, hang them up. That's not very safe. You can buy from us and other manufacturers loudspeakers with this kind of steel already built in them so you can fly them or get them up off the ground. If you're going to leave them permanently somewhere and you want to make sure nobody will get to it, the easiest thing would be to fly it or hang it up. Make sure you get speakers with flying hardware or hanging hardware built in them. Now getting back to this mixer for a second. All I did with this, with the green knobs that are on a Yamaha, on a Mackie I believe they're white, they're EQ knobs. EQ, fanciest word for tone control. But we're sound guys so we had to write EQ instead of tone. On good mixers, most mixers it's at least three bands. Lows, mids, and highs. On your better mixers you may even find four bands where they've broken it up. This is really handy because there's a lot of times you want to get rid of the Maybe all that handling noise? Well, I could do that with that bottom control. So that's the reason why it's broken up into bands. Otherwise, if I start cutting me, you can't hear me anymore. See, so that's the reason why there's multiple bands. While we're on the subject of EQ and what you guys think you hear from me, I do want to cover hard of hearing folks. A lot of guys that are in churches, get this every week. I can't hear, man. I can't hear what's going on. I don't know why. I, I pay my money. I come to church and I still can't hear. Mostly it's older folks. Mostly it's folks who have lost their hearing. You can't really help them. They didn't stop hearing. They stopped understanding. What they hear sounds something like this. Then it's one, two, three, very muffled, almost, we do that some Really muffled, like that. They spend a whole day not hearing any high frequency. Don't listen to me, listen to the speaker. And they listen to this, and their brains are so busy trying to put the words back together that it wears them out, and it frustrates them because they're getting old, and they've lost their hair. Peter and the guys here can help you get systems for those people that will put something in their ear and help them hear better. There are some people you can never make happy. I will tell you that. As long as you got somebody complaining, you, you know you're doing something right. But there are going to be people at church especially who will tell you, you know, I can't hear, I can't hear. And they're always going to sit in the wrong spot. And this is the part about what we do that uh, doesn't cost you a nickel. And I'm glad you came to hear this. Our job is more about attitude than is anything else. You guys that are musicians, I'll say something nice about you now. I want to work with you. I want you to know we're going to work together to get you the best sound. If you don't feel that way towards me, if we're already adversaries, when we're getting started on Sunday morning or right before the gig or at the sound check, that ain't helpful. So if you're a sound person, and you're lucky enough to work with the band. First off, you're the un, unsung hero of the band. You're the member that nobody gets to see. But it's your job to make them comfortable. 